Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Casey Bryant here bringing you exclusive live coverage of Danbury Hattricks Hockey on the FPHL simulated season presented by the Underreview. Org, as the Danbury Hattricks get set to play Game 2 tonight against the Watertown Wolves. A quick shout-out to my broadcast partners Jack O'Mara, who continue, continues to quarantine himself in New Milford, Connecticut. Meanwhile, Zach McGinnis seems to have collected his AARP check so that he can afford a microphone so that he can broadcast the Elmira Enforcers against the Delaware Thunder series coming up later today on the Under Reviews channel. Golly gee, I wonder who is going to win that one. I, I think Delaware has a real show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get through that with a straight face. Uh, anyway, the Danbury Hattricks will be getting set for Game 2 tonight in Watertown. Ordinarily, Game 1 would be in Watertown, and then Games 2 and 3 would be in Danbury, but they're mixing things up here. Am I saying that invalidates this whole experience? Yes, I'm saying it does that. I'm saying the under-review should be ashamed of themselves. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anyway, the Watertown Wolves will be looking to jumpstart their offense tonight. They've had difficulty scoring against the Danbury Hattricks in the regular season, and in the playoffs last night, they were able to battle back from three different deficits, but it was a third period explosion led by the Hattricks' fourth line that was able to generate things. Steve Mealy and Kendall Bolin Porter and Mattias Kasich were a trio to be reckoned with. We'll see if Ryan Marker and company have an answer tonight on home ice. We're going to get set and turn you over now to Watertown, New York for the start of Game 2 of the Hattricks and the Watertown Wolves. Watertown Municipal Arena is the site of Game 2 between the Danbury Hattricks and the Watertown Wolves as we get set for potentially Elimination Day for Watertown. It is either win or go home. Will there be a tomorrow for Watertown? They will need their offense to lead the way. The Danbury Hattricks put seven past netminder Jeremy Pominville last night. Watertown will need to put that behind them and turn the page as they try to solve Tom McGuckin here in game number two. Marker will be out there with Devaney and Boudreaux on the first line for the Watertown Wolves, countered by Shinkarik, Levesque, and Bunnell. Shinkara carries in for the Danbury Hattricks. They'll be skating right to left to start the game on your YouTube screens, wearing their road whites with orange trim. Over to Ethan Bush Anderson, who cycles it down low to Shinkara. Back out to the blue line, Bush Anderson. Shinkara sends it down low for Gordy Bennell. Back along the boards for Shinkara. Out to Bennell to Levesque in the slot. His shot is blocked. A second attempt is once more blocked by the stick of Devaney. Loose puck out in the center of the slot will be picked up by Boudreaux. He gets it back to Powell. Watertown will need more from their top line in game two if there is going to be a game three. They got four goals and they were able to keep pushing that is until the third period really. Things really seem to got get away from them in the late goings of last night's contest so they will need to play a full 60 minutes here and see if they can solve the Danbury defense which sort of kept them to the perimeter for most of the third period they had trouble breaking through the neutral zone and getting to the prime scoring areas so the face off will be to the right of Tom McGuckin Bronner and Lucas in the face off dot Lucas had a goal in last night's contest and in the realm of the living he was one of the best Watertown forwards led the league in short handed goals as there's a shot from the near side circle and they score Watertown breaks out to an early lead. It's Desjardins. And Tom McGuckin's body is blowing. I think that that shot from Michael Desjardins was so hard that it sucked the soul from Tom McGuckin's body. He's getting sent into an ethereal plane. Oh, no, it's just, it's just goal spotlights that they put on the ice. Nevertheless, seems like it's fighting a little dirty there if you're going to have lights just shining directly into the eyes of the opposing netminder. Just trying to damage their rods and cones for the remainder of the game. Well, if, you, if you get one past them, you don't deserve your corneas. So take that. Unless Desjardins is able to get the Watertown Wolves on the board and give them a 1-0 lead here in the early goings of the period, and that's exactly the kind of start that Watertown wanted and needed. Gives an excuse to blind the netminder when all is said and done. Bronner with a back pass now to Steve Brown. Crosses to Cruz Listmayer. Down low to Bronner. Back out to Listmayer. Quick passing out to Brown. One time shot from the circle. That's gloved and held by Pominville. Shane Morrissey got the stick on that. Pominville was able to snare it out of the air.
Deerson and Bullard in the faceoff dot. It'll be tied up and won by Deerson. He gets it back to Steve Brown. Brown out to Casper Deerson. Spins away from Bullard. Gavrick along the wall where he's so dangerous, but he is stripped from behind and carrying it ahead are the Watertown Wolves. They find Bullard in the slot. His shot is a pad save by McGuck. And another try is a glove stop, and he holds. Well, Vlad Gavrick gets his pocket picked there by Travis from Tiger King, and they're able to carry it up the ice as there's Bullard with a chance from the slot. And that's a paddle stop by McGuckin, and then the second attempt was even better than the first one, really, as they had more room to maneuver on that near side. I'm noticing also that McGuckin changed up his leg pads for this game here, perhaps uh, looking for a better performance than allowing four goals in game one, unless he had these white pads and I didn't notice it, but he used to have orange and black pads, but seems to have undergone some maintenance in the goaltending department there. Which is more true to form, actually, because Tom McGuckin did have orange pads only for, I think it was only one week in the regular season before he ditched that and went back to his all-white getup. Here's a shot that gets sent wide off the stick of Gavrick. Over to Corey Anderson on the near side circle. Anderson cutting along the goal line, hits it off the side of the net. Picked up by Coachman, and he's able to escape the defensive zone. Brought down to the ice is King. Corey Anderson lays the hammer and then skates away seemingly content with not taking the puck away as there's a shot that gets turned out by McGuckin behind the end line it goes. Now Corey Anderson will be going after the puck and he sends it up the ice to Steve Mealy. Mealy flips it over to Anderson but it's broken up. Taken away by Bullard. Bullard entering in, his long shot is gloved by McGuckin and he holds as we're about halfway through the first period. 1-0 is your score in favor of the Watertown Wolves. We take another look as that shot from King. That shot from King was only possible because Corey Anderson threw that big check and almost as if he wanted to run back and tell his teammates, guys, guys, look what I did. Well, you forgot something, Corey. You forgot the puck. Little and Kasich will be in the faceoff dot. It'll be won by Mattias Kasich. Gets it over to Aaron Atwell. Atwell slides it up to Steve Mealy, who joins the rush now with Kendall Bull and Porter. Mealy along the wall. Kasich setting up in front of the net. Mealy behind the end line, looking for the wraparound. That's an easy stop for Pominville. Atwell winds, fire, sends it wide, and finds Glass. Now up to the slot. Here's Mealy with a chance. That one's blocker to side. Kasich takes the puck away. Back out once more to Mealy. Down low to Kasich. Out to the point. Atwell to Bush Anderson to Bullen Porter. Back to Bush Anderson. He's being hampered from behind. Pinned along the wall, taken now by Bowen Porter, has room to maneuver, backhander, that one stopped by Pominville and he holds. Bowen Porter had Mealy calling for it in the slot, maybe he wasn't calling for it, I can't hear their virtual voices, but if I were Steve Mealy, I would be calling for that one because Bowen Porter had really two options, he could have stuffed it in as he did, or he had Mealy waiting for the one-timer, squaring up to the net. Me personally, I would have dished that out to open space, try to get the goaltender moving, but what do I know? I'm not, I'm not AI in this particular scenario. Here's Lucas at the near side circle, skating the other way, backhander, toe save McGuckin. Out to Powell with a slap shot blocked in front by the big body of Steve Brown, who ambles up the ice. Brown finessing his way in, trying to get past Port, sends it to the slot. Bronner gets a stick on it, but so does Jeremy Pominville, and he holds with 6.35 to go in the first period. Good play there by Steve Brown, wearing the puck in one end and then jump-starting the play on the other. So we get another look at the backhander from Jamie Lucas. What song are, is the Watertown Arena playing right now? It sounds like they're bumping the chronic by Dr. Dre. <laughs> all right. I mean, hey, it's a choice. I'm not faulting it at all. I'm just, just saying it's an interesting choice. Anyway, puck goes into the corner. Bronner at the post, has it taken away by Powell, and up the ice come the Wolves. Powell crosses over towards his defensive partner, Vlad Port, to Dominic Bogjul. Now up the right wing. Desjardins searching for an entry point. He's knocked off the puck by Nikola Levesque. Desjardins to Bogjul with five minutes to go in the first period. 
Listmayer crosses to Shankara, crosses red line, blue line, enters in. Dishes to Benel. Benel evades a stick check. Now to the slot, Levesque fanned on the one-time shot. Steve Brown chips it in down low, out to Levesque in the hash marks. Levesque once more loses control of the puck. Martin Tuma trying to keep it in. It'll be taken away by Watertown, and they'll carry up ice a three-on-two if they hurry. Desjardins gets it out now to Desjardins, and that shot is turned aside by McGuckin. Excuse me, it's Derek Boudreau with a shot now that's a glove save by McGuckin, and he holds with three minutes flat remaining in the first. Now, I understand it's a completely different nationality, seeing as though uh, Dominic Bogjul is Lithuanian. And maybe I've just been watching too much Sopranos while in this quarantine, but Bogjul comes dangerously close to sounding like an Italian swear. And it's just funny to me. Uh, seriously, if, if you were to walk around Little Italy in New York and say, Bogjul, you, you, you get some looks. Lamaru. Crosses over now to Marker, down low in the circle. One-timer, they score! Boudreau in the slot takes the feed from Marker, and it's 2-0 Watertown. Well, it starts with Justin Coachman jump-starting the play from the far side point. He and Lamoureux are playing pitch and catch at the blue line. They're eventually able to find a seam, get it down low to Ryan Marker, and Boudreau is left unmarked in the slot, and he's able to bury his first goal of the postseason. Goal scored by number 21, Bowie. And now it goes up to Ethan Bush Anderson carrying it in, and the hat tricks trail by two now, with two minutes to go in the first period. This is exactly the kind of start that the Watertown Wolves wanted in this one. They wanted to put the Danbury hat tricks on their heels, use home ice to their advantage, perhaps use those spotlights to damage the corneas of Tom McGuckin after scoring a goal. Not saying there's foul play involved here. Bush Anderson back out to Atwell. Atwell over to Gavrick to Bush Anderson to Atwell. Atwell with a long slapper that gets stopped by Pominville. Anderson is there to corral the rebound. Anderson kicks it along the wall. Will be taken by Lamoureux up to Little. Little loses the handle on it. It was poked away from his stick. 30 seconds remains in the opening frame. Carrying it ahead is Corey Anderson. Out to Gavrick. Takes a step in. Blocker save Pominville. 10 seconds to go. Out towards open space. Intercepted by Watertown. Sunstable will simply hold on to it, and that will do it for the first period. A terrific opening frame for the Watertown Wolves as they take a 2-0 lead over the Danbury Hattricks. Pominville stopped every shot that came his way and got support from his offense. Desjardins and Boudreaux, the two goal scorers for Watertown. We'll see if the second period features any changes of fortune for the Danbury Hattricks. You're watching Hattricks Hockey on the underreview.org's YouTube channel. Don't go anywhere. Danbury mostly controlled the pace of play in the second period and then they doubled time on attack for Watertown. Watertown more content to set up rush opportunities or just quickly acting after faceoffs. Their offense is a bit more efficient than Danbury's is as Danbury kills time in the offensive zone by passing back and forth between their forwards and blue liners but haven't really been able to get too many prime opportunities on Jeremy Pominville as here's Vlad Port who skates in and has four Danbury hat-tricks forming a wall in front of the netminder like a soccer play so he'll elect not to shoot. Now carrying it up the left wing are the hat-tricks. Gordy Benell at the far side circle spins around finds Levesque in the slot he scores! Nicola Levesque Takes the one-time shot from the slot. A brilliant feed from Benell. And the hat tricks are on the board. Well, that's exactly the start to the period that they needed. They needed to find a response. And Levesque leads the way for the hat tricks. Taking the pass from Gordy Benell. Ships it past the blocker of Jeremy Pominville. And just like that, the hat tricks have broken their drought. And a terrific pass from the wall to the hash marks. Again, that is... Get the bread, get the land of lakes, because that is the bread and butter play for the Danbury Hattricks. 
and really for any team that should be playing NHL. Here's another attempt from the circle to the slot, and Levesque with the fadeaway shot that's gloved by Pominville. It really is that simple. Get to the wall, get to the slot, back of the net. Lucas and Bronner in the dot. Lucas wins it back. Intercepted by Ruiz. Feeds Bronner for a one-timer. That's a terrific stop by Pominville. That was a rocket of a one-timer off the stick of Bronner. Ruiz had an open look at the net as Desjardins shot is gloved out of the air by McGuckin. I want to go back and have another look at that chance here. Ruiz takes a few steps in. Bronner looks for that far side post. Pominville read the play very well, anticipated the pass, and was able to get his right leg pad on the shot. It will now be Bullard and Bronner. To the right of McGuckin, tied up. Fighting forward in the circle. Puck is loose, taken by King. Over to Sunstaba. Now out to the slot. King's shot is swallowed up by McGuckin, and he holds. McGuckin will have to lock things down here in the second. Had a string of good saves in the first period, but was still solved in the late goings to give the Watertown Wolves a 2-0 lead. This would have been the first playoff for Tom McGuckin in his North American professional career. And he was red hot heading into what would have been the postseason. He and Dylan Kelly were splitting time in the regular season, which is one of the things that I really wish... Uh, might have been taken into account in the under reviews simulation as there's a one-timer that's stopped by Jeremy Pomerill is that it was a 50-50 split in goal and Dylan Kelly a true disservice I believe he's an 83 overall that's a disservice to Dylan Kelly I'll go to bat here for DK as that gets covered up by Tom McGuckin Dylan Kelly was just as good as Tom McGuckin really in the regular season McGuckin finished stronger Dylan Kelly had a couple of, of starts that I'm sure he would want back but I, I always go back to that four-game set. Four games in four days, one against the Watertown Wolves and then three against the Carolina Thunderbirds. Remember that time we swept the Carolina Thunderbirds? Because I certainly do. And Dylan Kelly was the stuff of nightmares for the Carolina Thunderbirds in that series. But then again, so was Tom McGuckin because the Carolina Thunderbirds simply couldn't beat the Danbury Hatchets this season. But I digress. There's Casper Dearson sending it into the catching glove of Pominville, and he holds. Which allows me to talk about the fact that the Carolina Thunderbirds were 1-6 against the Danbury Hatricks this season and averaged just three goals four per game. I'm just saying that the Danbury Hatricks have got the Thunderbirds number like their Jenny in 8675309. But I digress. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, guys, it's not a big deal. I don't know why you're making a big deal out of it. I'm not the one making a big deal out of it. I'm just saying. It's not a big deal. Anyway, puck goes out to Martin Tuma, cycles it down low, and now back out to the blue line. Garrett to Tuma, slides it to but Bowen Porter, looking for Neely, goes through his wickets. Tuma knocked off the puck and forced out into the neutral zone. Terrific play there by Watertown's defense. Back up for Neely, who re-enters. Neely looking for Bowen Porter. Sloppy entry for the Danbury Hattricks, and Watertown is able to regroup and carry it across the opposing blue line. Tuma forces him wide. Bolin Porter intercepts the pass, and the Hattricks carry up ice. Steve Mealy. Back pass from Morrissey over for Mealy. Mealy to Kasich to Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson winds and fires through traffic, but that's blocker to side by Pominville. Up the left wing. Devaney looks to the net. Glove save McGuckin, and he holds. Well, a whole lot of passing, but really just no good looks to the net for the Danbury Hattricks in that sequence. They have their backs to the net in a lot. The fourth line really just too clustered together. Kasich is setting the screen in front of Pominville, but Pominville still able to see that shot through traffic. Not an ineffective shift for the fourth line, as they were able to pin Watertown in their own end for a couple of minutes, but even still, got to get more shots towards Pominville and trying to finagle their way down towards the end line and get to the house. So there's a long shot that's blocked in front, picked up by Jamie Lucas. They'll be knocked off the puck by Ethan Bush Anderson. And up come the hat-tricks in transition. Here's Phil Bronner to Ruiz. 
Ruiz stops short with three wolves surrounding him. Chips it down low, but it'll be taken now by Vlad Port and carried up the ice by the Watertown Wolves with nine minutes to go here in the second. Michael Desjardins looking across the way for Bogzul. Out to some stable at the blue line. They play hot potato for a moment, searching for options. Down low for Michael Desjardins. His shot is blockered aside by Tom McGuckett. Ruiz entering in with Bronner cutting to the net. Excuse me, that's Gordy Bennell. Steve Brown to List Mayer. A one-time shot goes off of the blocker of Jeremy Palmerville, but Cruz List Mayer was mugged from behind, so that will be a delayed penalty going against the Watertown Wolves. Taking a step in and sending it wide, it'll be touched up by the Watertown Wolves, and it will be two minutes for first-degree murder. Or an elbow, that works too. It will be Dallas Desjardins. Taking a seat in the penalty box as we take another look at it. Comes up behind Cruz Listmayer and cold cocks him in the back of the head. So it'll be two minutes for elbowing. It'll be Shinkarik, Bunnell, and Levesque out with Bush Anderson and Atwell patrolling the point. Atwell takes a step in, has a look to the net, looks glove side. Pominville sees it and holds it. Aaron Atwell had a goal against the Watertown Wolves earlier in the regular season, one that he batted out of the air. It was a stop by Jeremy Pollenville that popped up into the air. Aaron Atwell kicked it up to his midsection with a skate while it was still airborne and batted it out of the air with a stick. It was one of the best goals of the season for the Danbury Hattricks and one of the most skilled plays from Aaron Atwell this season. Atwell, Tom McGuckin just touched the puck outside of the trapezoid, but I guess we're just uh, ignoring that. I guess that isn't a rule in the FPHL, so I guess they turned that ruling off. It's just funny to see the trapezoid on the ice and see a goaltender actually fielding it. I didn't know that you even really could turn that off in these games. Well, I guess they did. I, but again, that is that is realistic because that isn't a rule in the FPHL, mostly because rinks don't really have the trapezoid that they play in. Halfway through the power play, and the Hattricks will have to start from their own end as here's Port blasting one from the point. It gets blocked in front. Ryan Marker gets it out to the blue line, cycling it to Bogjul. Watertown hanging on to the puck and able to kill off these precious seconds of the power play. Now they'll cough it up, and Bush Anderson, with a stretch pass, finds its way to Carter Shinkarik. Shinkarik to Levesque looking down low for Benell. It goes off of his skates and backwards, and it will be pitchforked up into the air and sent down the length of the ice. That will do it for the power play. Another delayed penalty coming up against the Watertown Wolves as Carter Shinkarik crosses the opposing blue line, dances his way to his left. Back pass now for Bunnell, whose shot is gloved out of the air by Pominville. A terrific stop, and we have a cross check coming up against the Wolves. It'll be Ryan Marker taking a seat in the sin bin this time. Let's take another look at the play as Ryan Marker throws his check at Aaron Atwell. Aaron, Ryan Marker believes that Aaron Atwell was diving just a bit. So after a uneventful first power play, Danbury will get another shot. Here's Shane Morrissey. To Bronner, back out to the point. No one was home. Now Bronner picks it up and carries it back in with three and a half to go in the period. Looking down low, it'll be taken and sent out into the neutral zone, but corralled by Atwell. Ruiz enters in on the right side. Ruiz forced wide by King. Wraps it around the kick plate to Ethan Bush Anderson. Bronner taking a step in with Morrissey, setting a screen. Morrissey takes a few steps in, loses the handle on it, doesn't get a true shot off, and Pominville covers. It's a nice little role reversal there as Shane Morrissey, who is normally more of the finesse player, controlling the puck out into the open space. While Phil Bronner is normally the one setting the screen, the two of them switching spots. Down towards McGuckin, who settles the puck down. Final seconds of the power play over to Shinkarik. Takes a step in. Easy save, Pominville. Hattricks now officially 0 for 2 on the man advantage with less than two minutes to go in the second period. They trail 2 to 1, and a third penalty will be coming up against the Watertown Wolves. As this time we get a charging call coming up against Ryan Marker, who was fresh out of the box. 
And with a full head of steam, ran into Steve Brown. You can't do that. And it'll be the second straight penalty assessed to Ryan Marker. Ryan Marker came charging towards Steve Brown like a bat out of hell. Like a heat-seeking missile went charging towards Steve Brown and absolutely flattened him in the corner. So for the third time here in a row, the Danbury Hattricks will have a power play opportunity. If they're unable to find the back of the net before period's end, they will have about 10 seconds carrying over into the third. And right now they're just playing keep away at the blue line. Ruiz takes a step in, feeds the one-timer, and Morrissey's shot is blockered aside by Palmerville and cleared. Atwell entering in is Morrissey. Has two men with him. Back pass for Bush Anderson. Ruiz setting the screen in front. Bush Anderson knocked away from him. A shorthanded break with a few seconds to go. Entering in on McGuckin. Breakaway save. Rebound. Score! Dominic Bogjul. A disastrous turn of events for the Danbury Hattricks. As sloppy puck play leads to a breakaway goal. Bogjul is able to poke the puck away from the blue line. I believe it was Ethan Bush Anderson. I mean, he stripped Bush Anderson like he was at the Bada Bing. And Bogjul is able to carry it in on McGuck and gets the initial shot off, and it was a save and a rebound with a yawning net mouth. And that means a 3 to 1 lead belongs to the Watertown Wolves heading into the third period. Simply catastrophic for the Danbury Hatricks. Three consecutive power plays, and not only do they not get very many shots on goal to Jeremy Pominville of any note, but they give up a shorthanded goal in the waning seconds of the period. So the Hatricks, after a good start to the period, finish about as bad as you can. And now they trail by two heading into the final frame. We'll be back for coverage of the third period in game two of the FBHL simulated playoffs presented by theunderreview.org. Well, one would think that the third period can't possibly get any worse than how the second period ended, so for the Danbury Hattricks, they will have a couple of seconds of power play time to set something up without Ryan Marker on the ice before he's able to rejoin the action. They trail by two. It's 3-1 Watertown, as here's Powell. Watertown will simply hold onto the puck and enter in. Marker out of the box, rejoining the action. to Atwell behind his own end line, and the Hattricks will have to go the full 200 feet to generate any offense. Here's Shinkarik. Meandering in, sending it towards the slot, picked off by Devaney. Up into the air it goes, Bogjul with a back pass for Port, who carries it ahead. Vlad Port entering in, gets past Atwell. His shot is a save by McGuckin. Goes bowling into McGuckin and forces him into his net. No whistle. Here's Derek Boudreau, loses the handle, taken by Levesque. Levesque down low, looking out towards the point, Atwell. Atwell holding on to it at the point, now glides to his left, takes a few steps in, Atwell to the net, pad saved by Pominville. Pominville has been a brick wall here in, the, in this contest. Allowed one goal in the early goings of the second period, but otherwise has been sensational. Here's Bullard. Up to Derek Boudreau. Boudreau has Morrissey and Atwell marking him. Looking towards the slot, intercepted and carried up by Danbury. Ruiz to Bronner, entering in. Boudreau crossing the blue line, has Atwell in front of him. He's absolutely leveled. Excuse me, that is Steve Brown. And Steve Brown knocks him to his tookus as there's a one-time shot by Shane Morrissey that's stopped by Pominville. Turning ahead now, here's King. King looping it around, setting it up in front. No one was there. Corey Anderson picks it up now. Third line out for the Danbury Hattricks. Corey Anderson looking towards Ruiz. Ruiz rings it off the iron. And that has been the way the puck has bounced so far in this one for the Danbury Hattricks. Tricks. 
Your son Stabo feeding it down low for Dallas Desjardins. That's a stop by McGuckin, picked up by Aaron Atwell and sent up ice for Corey Anderson. Anderson, back pass for Dearson, down low. Anderson's wrist shot stopped by Pominville. Anderson trying to push Pominville into the back of the net. Pominville is able to cover up the puck by falling onto his back. An interesting strategy there by Corey Anderson. If you can't shoot the puck past Pominville, just simply shove Pominville into the net and hope no one notices. And if the goaltender crosses over the line with the puck in his padding, that technically counts. I'm reminded of the goal that the, was scored against Mike Smith, where Mike Smith had the puck in the back of his of his breezers and it's kind of sitting there tied up between his jersey and his pants and he skated backwards across the goal line and it counted as a goal entering in on the left side as a man set up in front that shot a sprawling save by McGuckin a second attempt is cut off by Steve Brown here's Casper Dearson Dearson to the net, easy save Pominville, and he holds. He said that pretty frequently here in this one, easy save Pominville. There's not too many high danger chances here for Danbury. Danbury, I believe according to under reviews rankings, have a 99 overall offense. You wouldn't be able to tell from the way that they're generating shots in this one. Generating quantity, but not quality. Off the face off, Pominville will cover, and we'll do it once more from the attacking zone for Danbury. As Lamaru and Kasich give a little how do you do, a do si do. Kasich and Lucas will be in the face off dot. Danbury has gotten the better of Watertown in the face off dot so far in this one, but the Wolves are able to come away with this. Bogjul carries up the right wing. Crosses now to the center of the ice. Now back pass for Coachman over to Lamaru. Lamaru takes a weak check from Bolin Porter. Lamaru to Coachman, back to Lamaru. Lucas takes a check, is forced off the puck, and Danbury unable to clear as here's Desjardins out to Lucas. His long shot, putting a little English on it, is Tom McGuckin, and he holds with 8-10 to go in the third period. Danbury needs to start getting the puck up ice. They can't have these shifts where they're getting pinned in their own end like this. Getting late early here for the Danbury Hattricks. If the score holds, the Danbury Hattricks would be playing host in game three tomorrow night in the Hat City. Plus it would be just the second time all season that the Watertown Wolves would have gotten the better of the Danbury Hattricks. They would have played a couple of more times in the regular season. Well, that of course was stolen from us on the weekend of the 13th and 14th as that one gets touched up for an offsides and we'll do it from the neutral zone. There are not too many offsides being assessed in these simulations. I will say the AI in these games are almost suspiciously good at keeping the play moving and they're not being offsides. Considering how many times it's a factor in real life Right down to the fact that we try to analyze down to the millimeter using these NASA telescopes whether or not a skate is on side or not. Though they're starting to loosen that rule up, thank God. Delayed penalty coming up against the Danbury Hattricks. As Watertown will get their first power play opportunity and it will come at a crucial time. As with five minutes to go here in the third period as that one gets gloved out of the air by McGuckin. A cross check will be assessed and that will kill off two vital minutes as Phil Bronner takes a seat. As Phil Bronner came together with a Watertown defender. And that is deemed a cross check. Lucas Bogjul and Desjardins, the unit out for the Watertown Wolves as Listmayer will fling that right into the stands and that will be a delay of game penalty. Well, it's almost like a cartoon where you're sitting around going, hey, can't get any worse, right? And then it starts pouring and something like even worse happens. This is now a comedy of errors in the final moments. So a five on three here for Watertown and 
Well, just when you say you can't go down five on four with the Danburyatrics, you certainly can't go down five on three. They're essentially giving the last few minutes to the Watertown Wolves here. There's a glove stop by McGuckin. Time ticking away. It'll be 128 to go in the five on three, 427 to go in the entire period. Watertown trying to cruise to the finish line here and force a decisive game three. Lucas Desjardins Bogjul countered by Shankarik. Bush Anderson checked from behind by Dominic Bogjul. Picked up by Gavrik, who will lift it down the length of the ice. And Watertown will have to go the full 200. Port over to Powell. Bogjul crosses to Desjardins, back pass to Powell. Looking for the one-timer, that's a stop by McGuckin, a rebound, another save McGuckin. He keeps the puck alive, and Danbury is able to clear. 15 seconds to go in the five on three. Bronner and Lusmeyer will come out of the box in rapid succession. So Danbury is able to kill off the penalties without too much danger. So I gets smothered by McGuckin, but the Hattricks only have now 2.46 to work with if they're going to come back in this one. They will need to average essentially a goal every minute 20 seconds. They'll send out their top line to start from their own end. Shankarik and Bullard in the dot to the right of McGuckin. Out to Sunstabo, takes a step in, glove save McGuckin. And then will kill off another few seconds. Watertown has really taken it to the Danbury Hattricks here in this third period. They have controlled the pace of play. They are out shooting the Hattricks 11 to three as you can see on your screen. A frustrating final frame here for Billy McCreary and company. Bullard in the neutral zone gets it over to Desjardins. Desjardins looking across the way, intercepted by Listmeyer. Up the left wing. Here comes Carter Shinkarik. Shinkarik flips it out towards the slot. They score! Cruz Listmeyer! And the hat tricks ain't dead yet. Good feed from Carter Shinkarik in the corner. Finds Cruz Listmeyer taking a few steps up. Recognizes that he's streaking towards the net and the one-time shot beats Pominville. A goal nearly identical to the one that Levesque scored in the second period. Streaking in on the wing, sending it towards the middle of the ice. And with 1.19 to go in regulation time, the Hattricks have a little bit of life and will keep an eye on McGuckin as Listmeyer holds along his own bench. Taken now by Phil Bronner. Bronner crosses the opposing blue line. Long shot blocked in front. McGuckin remains in his cage. Listmeyer gets it up. Now McGuckin to the bench. Here's Ruiz. At the circle. Has a couple of wolves on him. 40 seconds to go. Out to the point. Looking for Bronner. One timer. They score! Phil Bronner! And the improbable comeback. For the Danbury Hattricks, two goals in the final 90 seconds. And from the grave, the Hattricks back to life. Down 3-1, they've tied it. An unbelievable turn of events. And where did this come from? The Hattricks were dead and buried. And Watertown just were unable to close the door. As with 20 seconds to go, now the Hattricks have overcome a two goal deficit. 15 seconds remains in regulation time. Now King with another try at the end of regulation, bouncing around in front of McGuckin. It'll be taken by Brown and he'll put it underneath the padding of McGuckin with 8.7 to go. And now it looks like we could be heading to overtime. Who would have figured? What an unreal turn of momentum here for the Danbury Hattricks as they'll have Kasich 
trying to win this crucial defensive zone draw against Marker. Marker able to kick it back towards his blue liner. Port, his pass is broken up. Two seconds and one, and that will do it for regulation time. Me oh my. The Hattricks and Wolves will be heading into overtime here in game two. A goal for the Hattricks means they advance to the second round. A goal for the Watertown Wolves mean, means we have a game three on our hands tomorrow night in Danbury. Well, hang on to your hats. Sudden death overtime coming up next year in the FPHL simulated playoffs. Well, this is about the time of the game where you start looking for your heroes. It's where you can etch your name into the history books for your respective organization. The top line out for each squad, Carter Shinkarik and Ryan Marker, the two respective leading scorers for their teams. You got to figure that they will play a part in the decision, however, whichever way it falls. Down low, it'll be taken by Atwell and covered up by McGucket. Shinkarik has a primary assist, but has not found the back of the net yet in this postseason. Marker, meanwhile, has a couple of penalties in this one, as well as an assist. Forced off the puck, Ethan Bush Anderson. Up to Gordy Bennell. His pass into no man's land, and Watertown will retrieve in their own end. Powell forced off. Here's a setup in front. Pominville covers it up. Bouncing puck out now to the far side circle. Carrying it up are the Wolves. Feeds out to Marker, splits the defense. Marker in low, he scores! Ryan Marker weaves his way past the Danbury defense and wins it for the Watertown Wolves. And there will be a tomorrow. Ryan Marker, the hero, and Watertown is able to avert disaster. A blown 3-1 lead in the final minute 20 seconds. Deeks McGuckin out of his skates and wins it for the Wolves and who else would it be? Well we want to thank everyone for tuning in. Be sure to tune in to the games following on the Under Reviews YouTube channel and be sure to tune in tomorrow for what will be a decisive game three of the Watertown Wolves and Danbury Hattricks in the opening round of the FPHL simulated playoffs. I'm Casey Bryant saying have a good night and stay healthy.